YouTube, this is Mike here at Dogtown Farms, and I wanted to make a quick video to show you how to set up a simple, uh, you know, two solar panel, 12 volt system to power uh, anything you want, but uh, we're using it to power our uh, aquaponic tilapia farm. Here is uh, Elvira helping us out here. Uh, so all the links will be in the description. You have two 158 watt solar panels uh, by DM Solar made in Germany. They have like a 25 year warranty. And then <clears throat> you basically take uh, the both of the negative wires uh, coming out of the solar panels and then you combine them in this uh, MCX combiner piece here. Um, and then so that basically combines uh, those two wires into one wire here. And then you take the two positive wires coming out of the solar panels and combine them into this combiner uh, piece here. And that combines, so that combines those two wires into one positive wire. So then you take the, uh, now you have just one positive and one negative wire running from your solar panels. And you run those, uh, you know, as short as possible to wherever your uh, solar charge controller is going to be. Here, and uh, you have to size it right, uh, but for this, uh, it, you know, without you don't have to run any calculations. If you, uh, you know, just use the same components, this is a 30 amp uh, charge controller by Missouri Wind and Solar, which is enough to handle uh, the charge, uh, the amount of current that we have off those panels. So these are the two uh, wires that were coming from outside, and then you just run those into the uh, solar charge controller. Uh, you know, obviously the positive wire into the solar uh, input positive and the negative wire into the solar input negative. Uh, and then you have a 10 AWG wire um, which you strip and then put in there and then you screw it in. All these wires are stripped and then uh, you kind of tighten it down with these little screws here. So a 10 AWG aluminum wire uh, coming out of the positive and the negative and uh, it Took me a while to figure it out, but it's very simple once you get it figured out. Those uh, two wires go into the lead battery. This is your lead battery. It's the first battery that the wires come into, okay? And so you have, obviously, the positive going to the red positive, and the negative uh, going to the black negative on your lead battery, okay? Uh, and then to keep these at 12 volt, all you have to do, uh, or you can add as many batteries as you want, uh, within reason from this lead battery, but the way you do that is you take another 10 AWG wire and you run positive to positive, okay? So you have a red 10 AWG here, and then back here you have a 10 AWG running from the lead negative to your second negative, and then you just screw these on. You have these little uh, steel galvanized screws is all you need. Um, and then, you know, theoretically, you, if you wanted to add more batteries, you could just run another uh, as far as I know, you could you could put it on either side. You could you could screw another uh, you know loop connector here onto this terminal, uh, either on the right side or on the left side, either way. Uh, but to to add capacity, you would go from this uh, you know terminal here positive to the next battery positive, and then from this terminal negative to the next terminal negative. But right now. Uh, this, the system runs, you know, just fine with just the two batteries. It's just a very simple uh, system to kind of set up and, and 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 learn on. Okay, but anyway, so from there, uh, you you run a, in my opinion, as thick a wire as possible, and as short a wire as possible to your uh, inverter. So here we have a, uh, it's a car battery uh, wire it's two gauge two AWG and of course positive off the lead battery you know ha every this everything coming in uh, you know from the charge controller has to go to the lead battery everything coming out has to be you know from the lead battery so two AWG positive two AWG negative running off of the lead battery and then you just bolt those down to your inverter positive to positive negative to negative and just get as big of an inverter as you can I suppose uh, that way you know if you want to power a large device for a short amount of time you could still do it 
um, or you know a, a smaller device for a longer period of time and you flip the switch it tells you what the voltage is it doesn't tell you what the charge is like what percent of your battery bank is charged you need a separate device to do that but here you can kind of tell that it's highly charged because it says uh, 14 volts uh, I'm not an expert but as the charge goes down it'll go down to 12 and then 11 and then it'll warn you at 10 um, you know so it, it, again it doesn't tell you what percentage capacity of the batteries is charged but it does kind of give you an idea of <laughs> of that because it, the, the voltage seems to go down along with the capacity of charge as you use it. So all you got to do is just plug in, uh, well you can you can run USB, but you just plug in a standard AC cord to one of these cords and then you run it to what you want to run. And so <clears throat> we're able to run this system here for two days straight. Um, you know if I add more solar panels and more batteries uh, then I will be able to hopefully run this indefinitely. Um, but what I was running for two days straight was this little, who knows what it is, I'll have to check it, 10 watt uh, air pump. And then I was running a little, uh, I think it's 25 watt or something like that. Um, there's a pump in there, you know, AC pump, submersible, that was like 25 watts. And it ran those two items, it did not run the light, or the uh, bug light, but it ran those two critical items here for two days straight. Um, and one of the days was even shady. So just have to experiment to find out, uh, you know, how many more solar panels do I need uh, and how many more batteries do I need so that the pump, which obviously runs the water, and the air pump, which obviously aerates the water, you know, how, how many uh, components do I need so that this thing can survive cloudy days and, and charge uh, and, and run these systems basically continuously? Maybe it's not possible. Maybe it is possible. I think it's possible. Uh, but here we have 20 tilapia. Let's see if you can see them there. <laughs> you can kind of see them moving around there. They're more, even more visible at night. I'll have to add to this video, show you them swimming around at night. There's a couple. Well, okay. And uh, so basically the uh, pump pumps the water up top. Submersible pump pumps the water up top. And it's probably hard to see, but it just I just have the pump, uh, the hose comes out. Um, and, and then it's kind of, you know... Uh, weighted down by a rock there and then it just streams out floods this tank about six inches water hyacinth uh, which is edible uh, you know kind of tasty uh, you know it, it grows like a weed it's very hardy this water hyacinth and you see back there uh, it's probably hard to see it's being blocked right now but there's a, just a pipe uh, about four or five inches that you know drains down drains down through that pipe into the filter here, which is a trash can with, long story short, has some rocks in it, a little bit of sand. Um, the lava rock is what I recommend, just just no sand, only lava rock. Kind of washes over that, bacteria forms on all the surface area. Uh, and then also I have some water hyacinth growing in there, purifying the water further. Um, and so then it comes out of the trash can through that little, I believe it's a one inch PVC, maybe one and a half, um, and then it just dumps out. Adds a little bit more aeration to the water right there, um, and that's it. And then, it, but in addition to that, clearly, when I initially that was all the aeration I had, and I found out very quickly because the fish were coming to the surface and looked like they were gulping, and apparently that means there's not enough oxygen, so they needed this. Uh, you know, I found the biggest aerator I could find at Walmart. Um, it was like ten or twenty dollars, and that clearly has provided enough aeration for the fish. And you see the. And I just bought the biggest stones that I could find. I, I don't know if you can see it with the video, but it's basically these foot-long aerator stones that make quite a lot of bubbles. So they, they, they're they clearly surviving after, you know, a couple weeks. Probably We're at probably close to a month right now. Um, and then I have in the bag there, uh, around the bag, you definitely want, around the, the submersible pump, you definitely want a bag uh, or something to kind of pre-filter the water um, because basically that, that little, there's a white 
canvas or nylon bag that catches all the junk before it gets in the filter. So all you got to do is clear out the bag. Uh, you don't have to, the when you pull out that filter or you pull out the pump. There's no there's really nothing in the pump because it's all caught by the bag. If you don't have that bag, you're gonna you have to clear out the filter or the pump itself, the filter inside the pump or the pump itself, and it becomes problematic. I broke another pump because I uh, that way because I was pulling the cover off every single time. Um, and then I'm not sure what this little green, uh, little leafy plant is there. I, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but like I said, the rest of it's water hyacinth. It's edible. It's uh, very fast growing, pretty tasty. So, so that's basically the solar system. Uh, I'll post all the links and uh, you know like us on Facebook. Any questions? Uh, uh, you know, feel free to uh, to comment. Thanks. This is Dogtown Farms.